there's a function you can write known as a radial distribution function. And that radial distribution function is what you get if you integrate your psi, star psi, over all possible angles. So when you do that, you come up with a function that no longer depends on theta and phi. It will only depend on r. Okay, so that's that's your pro that's a probability uh, of finding. It tells you the probability of finding the electron. How that probability changes as you move away from the from the nucleus. Okay, so it depends on the distance. So uh, specifically, what do we mean by integrating over angles? If you have psi star psi. Okay, you integrate, you multiply that by sine theta and integrate from theta equals zero to theta equals pi. And then you integrate that over phi from zero to two pi. Okay. And then you just have r squared dr. Yeah, but you don't integrate your r uh, over r. Okay, so this is your what you would call your radial distribution function. Okay, and when you do this, you just end up with little r squared. I'm sorry. Uh, this is s of r dr. Okay, so you you end up with just little r squared. That's a distance squared times the radial function. If you remember, psi is radial function times spherical harmonic. Okay, so this is dr. S of r dr. So this expression right here, little r squared times big r squared, that is called your radial distribution function. Interpretation of that, that's the probability density for finding the electron as a function of distance from the nucleus, okay, regardless of which direction you take. So S of R dr, okay, this would be the probability of finding the electron at radius between in a spherical shell between at radius r, okay, between a sphere of radius r and another sphere that has a radius of r plus dr. Okay, so you have two spheres, two concentric spheres. So what's that volume enclosed between those two concentric spheres? That's called a shell. Okay. So if you want the probability of finding your particle between r and r plus dr. Okay. So this spherical shell right here, that is your rate. That is s of r dr. Okay. So if you were to plot that, and the reason we, get, we give it the symbol S of R is because it's also known as a surface density function. Okay? So, so it's R squared times the radial function squared right here. And this is what the plot looks like for the 1S orbital right here. Okay? And you have your 2S orbital. It's the rad radial distribution function for your uh, 1s and your 2s orbitals. So it tells us the probability, how the probability changes as you move away from the nucleus. And what do we see here for the 1s orbital? What's the, what distance corresponds to the most probable distance of an electron from the nucleus if it's in the 1s orbital? Where you have your peak in your function, right? Right there. So where you're the peak in your function, in other words, when your derivative of s of r dr is equal to zero, you get your maximum, right? So maximum s occurs when that derivative is zero. And that happens right here at the peak. See that derivative right there, zero. Okay, so right there, and you'll find that that comes out to be 52.9 picometers. 
Now, 52.9 picometers is known as the Bohr radius, and it's given the symbol A0. Right. So we're saying then, in, in the case of a hydrogen atom, the electron in the ground state is in the 1s orbital. The most probable distance of the electron from the nucleus is 52.9 picometers. Why is this thing called the Bohr radius? Because in an earlier model, before um, modern quantum mechanics in what was known as old quantum theory, Niels Bohr, okay, he proposed uh, allowed orbits for electrons around the atom. And his, in his first orbit, he was able to show that that first orbit is going to be 52.9 picometers radius. Okay? So a 52.9 picometer radius, an orbit around the nucleus with that kind of radius is the, the lowest allowed orbit according to Bohr's old quantum theory. So in Bohr's old quantum theory, he says that it can only be in allowed, electrons can only be in certain allowed orbits. The first orbit is 52.9 picometers. Modern quantum mechanics says that's the most probable distance of the electron. The electron is not restricted to that orbit. See, the problem with that Bohr model is in that model, it's deterministic. You have a very well-defined orbit for the electron. So that's inconsistent with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So now we're saying it's not in that orbit. It's in the 1s orbital, which happens to have the most probable location, most probable distance being 52.9 picometers from the nucleus. The electron can actually be anywhere from very close to the nucleus to very far away from the nucleus. In fact, point by point comparison, a point that is 52.9 picometers away versus a point very close to the nucleus, it turns out it's more probable to find your electron closer to the nucleus than at 52.9 picometers. But since you've got this big surface compared to just one point, a big surface at 52.9 picometers versus just one point near the nucleus, the most probable distance is at 52.9 picometers. Your radial function actually is, for the 1s, actually maxes out at r equals 0. Okay? On a point, the most probable point where you can find the electron in the 1s orbital is at the nucleus. If you look at the radial function, okay, actually it's the square of the radial function, it maxes out at the nucleus. But the radial distribution function, okay, make a distinction between the two. R is the radial function. Radial distribution function is radial function squared times R squared. So you can see that at the nucleus, what happens here? Oops. At the nucleus, this little r is 0, even though your radial function itself maxes out at the nucleus. Okay, let me illustrate that with uh, the orbitron plots. You can see that here. If you look at the wave function itself for the 1s orbital, okay? You can see it maxes out at the nucleus. This is the nucleus, and you're moving away from the nucleus. The most probable point, okay, the most probable point for your electron is at the nucleus. But the most probable distance is, if you look at the radial distribution right here, okay, there is a radial distribution right here. The most probable distance is right here, and that's going to be 52.9 picometers for Z equals 1. That's for hydrogen atom. So it's at the peak of the wave. This is where the peak of the, the most the highest probability. So at this distance right here, that's the most probable distance of the electron from the nucleus. Okay. So the radial distribution function tells you how the probability changes versus distance. Okay? But as you go away from the nucleus, okay, all points at a given distance from the nucleus from a given point constitutes a sphere, right? So as you move away from the nucleus, that sphere, that spherical surface gets bigger and bigger and bigger. That's why 
uh, there's that extra term you have to consider. So you consider the value of R squared itself and then the value and the surface area of the sphere. Okay? In fact, the radial distribution for an, uh, 1s orbit for the 1s orbital is 4 pi r squared times psi squared. Okay? So your r squared, big r squared, you can rewrite that this way. Okay? Keeping in mind that psi is radial function times spherical harmonic. Right? And what is 4 pi r squared? That's just the surface area of a sphere. Okay? So the farther you are from the nucleus, the larger the surface area of that sphere. Okay. So if you take a look at, let's look at the expressions themselves, the equations. All right, right here. Right here. Your radial distribution function is four pi, four pi r squared times psi squared. Okay, so the bigger, so even though psi for a 1s electron is actually maximized near the nu at the nucleus, okay, the radial distribution function maxes out at 52.9 picometers at one more. Okay, so according to this graph, what's the most probable distance of the 2s of an electron if it's in the 2s orbital of hydrogen? Somewhere around here, right? Around 270 something picometers. So 52, that's about five bore radii. Okay, so so one bore, by the way, is, the, is what we would call the atomic unit for distance, is 52.9 picometers. So this happens at around five bores. Maximum probability. The distance where you're most probable probably going to find the electron if it happens to be in the 2s orbital of hydrogen. Yes. One bore is 52.9. It's an atomic unit for distance. So to answer this question down here, from which orbit, for which orbital is, is the electron on average closer to the nucleus, 1s or 2s? 1s. 